before Lincoln Park, I basically just made hip hop music. I, I just basically produced beats for myself and my friends. And then once Lincoln Park took off, I didn't really have any time to make any any just straight hip hop music. And uh, eventually, a couple of years ago, I uh, started screwing around some tracks, and uh, those tracks eventually turned into this album. I really wanted my friends to be a part of this record because you know it's an important record for me. Um, it's something that I've been waiting kind of waiting for somebody else to make and, and nobody's done it so um, I figured why not just do it myself and it feels good to be able to say you know when I make a record on my own this is what it sounds like this is the only piece of gear in the studio that I actually have to like start up Especially in the beginning, most of the songs were just experiments. I wanted to try out some ideas that um, I hadn't tried before. And once I had laid that groundwork down, I was ready to put some friends on it. I grew up drawing and painting, so it's easy for me to associate um, those things with the studio. Uh, it's like I go in with a, like a blank canvas, and I, I have to experiment using the tools that I know work and mix those with the new ideas that I've never tried before in order to, to finish a project. Every detail counts. Kenna is the kind of friend who you can introduce to anybody, and they, they like him. He has a really unique voice, too, so I had to put him on the record. They're compressing the shit out of my voice, and it's messing everything up, you know what I'm saying? We need to, like, you know, do something about it. A little bit lower on that. On a couple of songs, I started adding some keyboard choir melodies, and I really liked the texture of that, but there was a problem. The keyboard choirs just sounded too fake, so I ended up giving those tracks to a choir and having them sing the parts that I wrote to give a more uh, fuller texture to songs like uh, Slip Out the Back, Cigarettes, and Kenji. I've worked with a string group before um, on the Meteor album. Dave Campbell, who's the father of Beck is a guy I know I can send my stuff to and he can make it come to life with live strings. At one point when we were recording the strings for Remember the Name, the string group was having a really tough time playing the main string part on the song because uh, I had written it on keyboard and it turned out that it was really tough to play on an actual cello. So we kept screwing around with all these different ways to do it and could not come up with something that sounded right. And, and after trying that for probably a half an hour, uh, the string players in the group actually figured out a pretty amazing way to play it. They ended up splitting up the phrase, so each of them only played one or two notes, and their timing had to be perfect. You were like, you were like, you sounded like a grumpy old man, like struggling to make a laugh. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've known the guys from Styles of Beyond for about eight years. Uh, Ryu is the kind of guy, he's got those one liners that just make other rappers jealous. Tak has this swagger that no nobody else can imitate, just in the way he, he does his thing, the way he is on stage, the way he rhymes. At the end of the day, these guys are one of the most talented up-and-coming groups out there, and they're one of the best examples of why the album's called The Rising Tide. The song Back Home is about the less publicized version of where we come from, Common being from Chicago and me and SOB being from L.A. The version of L.A. that you usually hear about doesn't include Little Tokyo and, and Koreatown and Alvarado Street and and the valley and, and Pasadena. Um, so we wanted to stay true to, to those things about LA. When Common came in to record Back Home, he played me his, um, at that point, soon to be released album, which was entitled B, and I played him tracks from my record. 
It was pretty funny because I think we spent more time kicking back and, and just talking than we actually did recording. Common's a pretty, he's a pretty deep dude. And even though we don't agree on everything, uh, we tend to have some pretty interesting conversations. After we got out of the studio, I had about 20 tracks that were potential album songs. So I got together with Brad Delson and Jay, two people who I can trust. And we decided which songs would make the final cut. I wanted to, res I wanted to respect the retirement. <laughs> respect, the, right. respect what you're doing now. So I figured that this way it keeps it on that and it keeps the fans, it gives them something that, that they can... Jay, as an executive producer, because, I mean, plain and simple, the guy's brilliant. You know what I mean? It's, it's a weird kind of brilliant, though. He, he makes these observations that may seem small or like you don't know why, you don't know where they fit in. But those observations a lot of times end up being the little things that help make or strengthen the foundation of your project. Not 20. You're not putting 20 on that one. No, yeah, that's why we need you. That's why we're, that's why we're listening we need to you. To tell okay, us okay. which one's not to put on. All right. Because I can't. We're trying to figure I it out. Decide. Here's here's right. the thing. I'm I'm, right. I'm I don't want to be. I want to weigh in on the decision, but I and I'm, and I kind of like I figure I'll probably you know it is it's my record, so I have final say on it. Like creatively, I want to do that, but I want what I really want from you guys is to be able to get. Uh, a, a reaction as far as what you think make would make a good album. You know what I mean? Which songs to cut, which songs to keep. Okay. Because I know that your your take is going to be different than Brad's. Because I know in particular there's at least two songs where you completely disagree. Paul, me and this guy. Yeah, yeah. And that's what I don't want to fight in that. Like, <laughs> yeah. You know, I told, I told you last <laughs> time there was going to be. Beef. <laughs> Yeah. I told you. Oh, that's right. We've been waiting for this for a while. Your head that you want to, you know, All let right. me know about just any of it. Let's go. Hi. Crazy. Just like your names in there. Oh. I, I had to give you a I tell you, I, had to, I wanted to get his approval on that line. Mm -hmm. I was like, I had to ask. You like, cool with that? You like, you was cool with that? I was like, hi. <laughs> <laughs> Makes a master that one. Let's move on, man. That's... Yeah, that was my shit with that. That wasn't deep enough. Now it's there. That's deep. Dude, yeah, you did great on that. Huh? That's yeah, so now that shit, that shit's serious. Yeah, that, that was, was my shit. I was. I remember that was the co the comment you made originally was that you wanted to go deeper. Yeah. Be a little darker. Yeah, I love the new sample and like the structure. It makes it feel interesting. interesting. It makes it feel it's more really emotional. Right? Oh, yeah. Okay. You got anything? You want yeah. us to do anything to that? Nah, leave that alone. Okay. That's it. You ever heard it? <laughs> I hate it. <laughs> you ever heard this one? I gotta play it. How you doing, y'all? My name's Mike. I'm cool with the new shit. I'm doing it all night. I like what I do. I do it alike. You can quit and get it. I'm like, stop. This is my favorite record. I added in, um, on this one I got uh, live strings. Uh -huh. I think live choir is on this too. Hearing Jay say you've got a dope verse is like winning the lottery. If Hope says a verse is hot, you better make sure that verse is on your record. I love that line. Huh? You like that line? Hell yeah. Oh. The song is called Where'd You Go? It's got a girl named Holly Brooke on it. Holly Brooke? People, a lot of people write songs about being on the road. Uh huh. And nobody really writes songs about from the perspective of the people who they leave at home. Right. My wife has cried three times listening to this song. Wow. Yeah, she cries like every time I play it. Wow. Okay. So we know we can't, you can't touch that. <laughs> <laughs> get some exclusive stuff going. Get one of the tracks from the record on there. Get a 16 and then what, from what, 
The second part. <laughs> <laughs> you can give me that, and that's gonna be it. That's what you got. Alright. I was looking out the window when that part came. Cool. Is that the record that you made? Yeah. There's nothing pop about that record. That's underground hip hop. Okay. With with big I sound. feel that, but I'm well, saying with big with big sounds. That's mm -hmm. what takes it over because the sounds are so big. Right. It's an underground that's an underground hip hop record. That's a good point. So that's you, you, I mean, who we find it. F you know, find find it. Find find where I went pop and criticize criticize it. Where is it? Find it. Hey. Okay. If you want to open up big, that's the record. You know, I'm just giving all the conversation. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right? I mean, Cigarettes is my favorite record. That is the biggest record. I mean, I, I, I might be some stuff I didn't hear thus far. That's the biggest record I've heard. It was really rad. <laughs> you agree? Oh, hold on, pause this. This is the only one that I can't keep into consideration of taking it off the record. I have to have this one. You mean the right, second one? This one right here that I'm about to play you? No, nah, it's two. Oh, yeah. Okay, the other one. Yeah. This is the second one that I can't not have on the record. How many are there, just so we know? <laughs> uh, we've already gotten uh, through most of them. <laughs> Huh, Mike? <laughs> this Why are we here, huh? Go ahead. I know, I know. I'm just making you a job dip. I'm putting li landmines out there yeah. <laughs> to work around. It's cool. This is about Japanese internment. That's why it's my dad's story. Let me tell you a story in the form of a dream. I don't know why I have to tell it, but I know what it means. Yeah, that's... And that beat is hard. Like you haven't heard this one yet. This is my lowrider joint. Ooh. That beat is hard. Uh-oh. That's one of my favorite verses on the record. <laughs> you like it, Mark? Yeah, what? I got a new vocalist on this one. Mm -hmm. I got Kenna and this guy named Jonah. We all sang, all three of us sang on it. I layered the vocal. It's crazy. Huh? I layered the vocal up. It's crazy. Wow. Like that. <laughs> John Legend sang the hook on it though. John Legend's on this now? Yeah. I got I had him sing instead of me. Huh? I had him sing the part that I was singing. Uh-huh. I thought he'd sound better. He does. So it's cool, dude, we're really Mike, does this list freak you out at all or does it sound about right? Let me just take it in real quick. It's like it's like you're telling him that his kids are no good. Yeah, no. <laughs> These kids well, you are know it's some of them he some some that he's attached. Like yeah, yeah, little yeah. Bobby. Little Bobby's little Bobby's not good at little, reading. Little, we don't like little Bobby. <laughs> what do you mean he little needs Bobby's a shower? Right. Need to work. He's my kid's not the dirty kid. Yeah. Don't tell me he needs to shower more. He showers enough. Now in stereo it is the best vocal performance on the album. Thanks. One of the hardest beats. It's one definitely the, probably the hardest beat. Yeah. We needed some of that. That's why we came with Petrified and In Stereo. Yeah. We need some more. Something a little heavier. I thought Be Somebody, I thought Lupe's verse was dope, but yeah. I just thought the track was like, right. cool. Right. Well, that's kind of where I... got Holly on there already. I mean, picking the good songs and letting the ones that aren't as good just be what they are. Maybe 13 is the new, is the new 14. No. <laughs> You're going to have stop with the 12, man. I'm seeing through your 12 game. It's not a dude, it's not a game. It's a, <laughs> you're playing the 12. No, you're it's the 12 not. Game. No, no, no. That's a 12 game. Get me I, gone is, is a short game. record. Listen to me. That you are doing the 12, you're doing a 12 song album if you put an inner a short song interlude and an intro on it, it's 12 songs. No, get me gone is No, its people, own thing. fans are going to see right through that. They're going to look at it and they're going to say that's 12 songs. 
All right. What are you guys? You guys have been here the whole time. I mean, I know you're working the cameras, but you guys must have an opinion. You must be dying Wait, to weigh in McDerm on this. Wait, McDermott. No, I'm talking to the AV team. <laughs> oh boy. These guys ain't. They're not rock stars. I try to get them takes vodka and all this kind of stuff. These guys, they wouldn't do it. They wouldn't even sit down. <laughs> These guys? You guys have a seat. <laughs> They're like, like it'll, it'll, see, the, you, you got to tell them it'll be good for their work because the vodka will smooth out the camera motion. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there won't be so much of this. It'll just be, oh. The time. No problem. Much and appreciate. one last thing, Brad, you're not really on my and our guy, and this isn't a real record. You're on punk. <laughs> Ashton, come out. <laughs> Where is he? Anyway. Yeah, so we're good. We'll figure this out. I'll let you guys know. I'll let you guys know. Yeah, thanks, Jay. It's good, Great man. Job, it's man. good help. It's good it's help. It's always a possibility. I, I, know, I know that Ashton could always be right around that corner. Captured, huh? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wants to make a toast. I, I just realized mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we'll make a toast to Mike. Thank Made you, Jay. a wonderful album. Fresh, new. Sounds like nothing I've ever heard. It's a beautiful thing. It's, and I know it's a... Uh, uh, Oh, how should I say? I guess it's, it's a nervous time for you to be out. You're stepping out and you're doing something different, but that's that's when the best things happen. I wish you all the best. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Proud of you, Kit. Congratulations. Cheers. Water glass Cheers. Anybody else yeah. want to say anything? Yes. I think you said it best. Okay, great. Yeah. After the record was done and the songs were picked, I had to figure out the artwork. I've been doing a, a little bit of painting lately, and I wanted the album art to be based around that. This was a stencil from our Meteora, uh, our Meteora art day. I've got like sketches that I use for reanimation. There's a cover oh, yeah. from reanimation. There's a sticker from reanimation, and I think the single cover. We At one point when we were doing art for the Sport Minor thing, I was. I, I just didn't like the fact that we weren't coming out with something like that looked different, different. And I, I have like my own little style, my own little thing that I've I've been working on. A lot of stuff I like to do uh, that looks like this. So I figured I'd just get started on some sketches and come up with some things that you know maybe would work in the album. This type of thing turned into that, which I'm just getting started on right now. Mm -hmm. uh, I haven't done perspective stuff in, since like it's college. A lot of these characters that I'm doing on this feel really similar to the stuff I did in my um, my DC shoe. The one um, that we gave the money to the scholarship. That short European tour, um, I did the shows with Ryu, Talk, and Cheap Shot from Styles of Beyond, and, and um, a drummer named Beatdown uh, that we found. He's just this, he's this dude from Queens who he just kills it. Um, and every night we played, we pretty much saw the crowd double during the length of our show. Like we'd show up at one point, and then by the end of it, they were, you know, there's twice as many people. Before the record was released, just like every time, it's time to make a video. Uh, we made a few of them actually, which was different for me. So here we are. We got a um, video shoot. Director Robert Hills. Song is called Petrified, and we are here at what well, looks like a it looks like a, a paintball field, um, but it's not. It's um, there's some rail cars down here, some broken down uh, buildings, and we're kind of doing this uh, really rough style, kind of like uh, black and white. Lots of action, lots of uh, intensity, and cool compositions. Okay, so let's do this. Imagery I first thought of when I when I recorded the song, I think it was the day after we did the vocals on the song. Um, I I really liked some of these some old hip hop videos, like um, old EPMD videos and old like there was a there's a I remember DOS Effects first video where they were in the sewer and they were in the, the trains and all this stuff. Um, just felt like that felt like petrified to me. It felt like that song. Um, so I wanted to find a director who had a feel for like. Uh, 
who really established the right kind of environment, who seemed to have a feel for creating consistent video and um, could really set a tone. And uh, I like Robert's videos a lot, so you know he, he did the, a really great video for Jet. Um, that probably is one of my favorite videos from last year, so I, that's why I gave him a call. Petrified was one of my favorites, one favorite ones to make because it was an overnight shoot and we got to play with fire, which is always fun. As you can see, it's daylight out. We made it well past the six o'clock mark. It is past 6.30 in the morning. The balloon's leaving, the cars are leaving. We're leaving. It's over. After we eat. Let's introduce a video, maybe. It's called, what is the song? The rising tide is really about a tide group of people coming up together. That's what the name means. People have asked me why I have to put a name on the project instead of my name, or to make a reference to my friends in the name of the album instead of just letting it be about me. I guess it's just my nature to share the focus of my project with my friends, especially when they do such great work. But at the end of the day, The Rising Tide is my album. It was just me messing around with some tracks, trying to figure out who I was and what I sounded like as an individual. And really, I just wanted to show people that I was hungry, and I still am. <laughs>